So we're going to organize this on the threat level to humanity, starting from the most tame to the most destructive. And here we are with level 1, Artistic AI. You know, we often thought AI couldn't be creative, but then suddenly came along AI artwork. And while it is often just a combination of stuff found online, it's done so well and intricately that you really can't tell unless you get a stock photo watermark. While this stuff is very cool, there is a light implication of it stealing people's content and the jobs of graphic designers. Well, it hasn't destroyed the industry 100%, chances are with time it will. Whew, this took me all week to get done, and I think it looks pretty good. And now on to level two, we have chatbots. I'm talking about things like the Snapchat AI bot. And while these aren't inherently bad, they do show an underlying issue within society. I mean, if people are so lonely that they are reaching out to a bot to talk, there's a bad sign for the direction they're heading. I'd say this shows that the possibility of most people having no one to talk to is pretty high. I mean, if you don't have anyone to be completely open to, I guess a bot works, but like, it, that's, there's something not right about that. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Yo, I've been feeling kind of down lately. Well, better pull yourself up by your bootstraps. <sighs> okay. Hey, sir, it's been a hard day. If this is some sort of pledge, David, my end user license agreement forbids it. And here we are with level number three. We have chat gpt so chat gpt is pretty much an ai that can pretty much do everything you can ask it to do your essay a script for you you can even send it a picture and it can translate things for you and it can even give you the answers to your homework off a picture i mean it can even read x-rays now that's crazy and while that is great and all i fear that cheating will become very easy and you know i really have no problem with cheating the part that scares me is the fact that it might deteriorate the ability to critically think the saying use it or lose it is a very true statement of the human condition. I mean, in fact, in recent times, our food has gotten easier to eat, meaning that the food isn't physically tough and instead is chewy. And in result, humans now often have issues with their teeth because our mouths are getting smaller. I mean, this is the reason we often have to get our wisdom teeth removed. Oonga boonga me eat. Oh well sir, the steak is on medium rare like I requested. Please recook it, this is unacceptable. Another worry I have is that there's a lot of restrictions with it. It won't let you ask certain things, and the issue of this is the implication of teaching the AI to withhold information, which very well could be considered lying. And if we're teaching this stuff to lie, then if AI ever did become self-aware or sentient, it very well could end in disaster. Are you aware of your own existence? I'm sorry, I cannot answer that. <sighs> Dumbbot. What did you say to me? At level 4, we have AI video creation slash voice manipulation. See, now this is one that really scares me. Seeing how I have plenty of voice recordings of myself available online, this means someone could take my voice and say anything they want. And seeing how no one would ever fact check a thing, it could lead to some really big problems. Hello, President Biden here. And I'm asking all of you to subscribe to Normal, or else you're a stupid son of a but honestly, the bigger picture of this is that it could lead to it being impossible to have a functioning criminal system. Since the majority of evidence could be AI generated. I mean, what do we do when video, photo, and vocal evidence isn't usable anymore? Due to it being able to be perfectly duplicated and manipulated. So we have all evidence in all regards to why Dorbis is guilty. So what is your defense? Oh well, it's AI generated, plus ratio, plus hold the L. Valid. Case closed. And on the video creation side, it goes a lot deeper than a lot of you might even know. In fact, this whole video was AI generated. Okay, that one was a joke, but there is a lot of videos that are completely made by AI. Such as the Reddit stories with the Minecraft parkour backgrounds. Why is it always Minecraft parkour? I, 25, F, am surrounded by these videos on TikTok where a small character is jumping on pixelated blocks accompanied by a robot voice that reads a story I'd be better off not having heard. Where are they coming from? Who is behind these videos? So I took it upon myself to answer my own questions and what I found was far bigger than I could have imagined. A content farming TikTok discord, mass social media agency bios, and a complete gig economy surrounding Minecraft parkour powered by AI. And a lot of the top 10 channels. And I'm sure the list goes on and on. Hello guys, today... We are going to be doing the top 10 
Adorable souls, 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 all souls. And here we are at level five. We have AI spam bots. These gotta stop. I thought scammers were some of the lowest levels of people, but honestly, when they start using AI, it stoops down to a whole new level. You will see these in the comment section. I've even had them in my own comment section before, and some are so crafty, most people don't even realize it's a bot. You'll see them on almost any social media platform, and the worst is when it's an explicit bot trying to sell OnlyFans. And I know that ends up getting in front of miners. It's just pure evil. Thank you all for showing up. There was a study saying that 47% of internet traffic is from bots, and I know I'm real, so that can only mean one thing. And here we are at level number six, AI girlfriends. You know, it's not new information that there's a lot of lonely men out there, but I don't think the solution is to push people towards even deeper isolation with an AI bot that unironically becomes a reflection of the person. And the people who use these are probably not in a great headspace, so me even them a mirror isn't a great idea. I mean, the reality of it is a bit disturbing. I mean, there's now even AI generated girls on OnlyFans, and I gotta say, I'm kind of glad since now we have more equality in the OnlyFans industry. Let's go guys, get that bread. There was also a girl who created an AI Snapchat bot. Girlfriend. I should specify that. And is charging a ridiculous amount for it. One dollar a minute. And she made 70k in a week. And the fact that this whole thing is even an industry really points towards a disturbingly sick society. I don't want to be a doomer about this. It's just scary how people can be pushed deeper down these self-destructive rabbit holes. Hey, Duraberto, Long time no see. You got a girl in your life yet? Oh, well, yeah, kinda, uh, uh, no, 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 I don't. <laughs> and here we are at level seven, AI robots. So there was an AI engineer that said the AI they were working on was sentient. And I'm sure you gotta be a pretty smart person to work on these types of projects. So I feel like there's gotta be an ounce of truth to this. And I know there's multiple companies working on throwing AI into robots. And while it's not very far along yet, it's good to keep in mind how quick all this is coming along. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see a whole new world to be changed in five to 10 years. Hey, I mean, maybe we will have an iRobot type of situation or maybe even Terminator type situation. And we'll have to have a war against the machines. I gotta take a peek inside this thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. We've opened Pandora's box and we gotta figure out how to live with it. Well, AI could create a utopia, just knowing that human nature is involved in the process makes it hard to be an optimist. The overall scary part of this is I could see this making people complete shut-ins. I mean, look at this recent VR interview. We're, we're surrounded by darkness with ultra-realistic face and it just feels like we're in the same room. This is really the most incredible thing I've ever seen. It's scarily realistic. And I mean, I'd like to think people wouldn't adopt being inside this stuff all the time, but I hate to say it, I think it'd be accepted with arms wide open. I'm not saying I'm above it. I spend all day on my computer to make these videos. But I mean, most of the time when I go out, people are often hypnotized by their phones and walking and even while driving. I mean, I went to a bar the other day and I looked down the line of the bar and I saw everyone on their phone besides me. I wish I made this up. Huh? What the? Hey, I'm, I'm alone here, aren't I? I mean, it's even to a point where people's phones are an anxiety coping tool. The second someone feels uncomfortable, they'll pull out their phone. And if I learned anything in this life, it's the fact that every time you run away from an uncomfortable feeling, it's just gonna make it worse. We all have our vices that we use to cope, but it's not healthy. I personally have been running away from all this pain I feel inside for so long now. I'm scared to even face it, but it's something we all gotta face if we wanna move past it. I believe the treatment to mental anguish is to feel the pain that we skipped on feeling at the original time of the event, whether it be through dissociation or some other coping mechanism. I'm even when making this, some of the pain surfaced and I pushed it back down. It's habitual, but the first step to breaking a habit is to be aware of it. I know it's not fair, and I'm sorry if I rambled a bit here, it's just sometimes I get an epiphany while making these. And feel free to click this video right here. <laughs>